and <coughs> explain to us this, the nature and the intention, the motivation behind funding this science policy dialogue, asking the question, can we stop desertification with nature-based solutions? Maria, thank you for coming and for starting the talk today. Dear Professor Kramer, uh, dear coordinator, Professor Briasulis, dear uh, participants and uh, desertification experts, dear friends, uh, we have, I have been in this area for a long time and I, can, uh, I know uh, familiar faces and uh, I, I consider you friends. Uh, thank you very much for this invitation. I am very happy to see that uh, the project uh, proceeded very well. Uh, thanks to the good coordination you had and to the good collaboration between uh, the teams. This has been a very good uh, project and very good consortium. And uh, I hope that uh, you will continue to work after the project uh, so we'll look at the long term uh, continuation of uh, these uh, research efforts. Uh, my presentation, I will try to, to be brief and uh, to give you some indications of uh, what is happening now in Horizon 2020 with uh, desertification research. And uh, I will uh, start by saying that uh, it needs your support. It needs uh, the lobbying from you to bring, it, uh, to bring it forward. Because as you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, changes in uh, the Horizon 2020 and reformulation of priorities, but there is always a place for uh, desertification, which is considered very important. But uh, it needs, uh, of course, to be uh, brought forward by the member states as priorities to the Council of Europe and then come to us as a priority. So, as you see, the desertification has a very long funding history. Uh, we worked a lot with the basic research, with the assessment, uh, with ways of mitigating. And uh, I said that it has a long history because it started in 1994, the funding. And uh, there have been a lot of projects funded. As you see, we passed over seven framework programs. And so there is no other framework program that was the last framework, the seven, with uh, Ledra and another project, Undesert. <coughs> These two ones. Uh, you see there has been a significant funding for framework program seven, and now we have to see how to continue in uh, Horizon 2020. <coughs> and of course, uh, very important uh, that this area has a convention. So there is an umbrella which can support the need for desertification and it's uh, very important to work close together with the UNCCD, with the science uh, program of the UNCCD and uh, to really one of the aims that myself I put when I'm asked to prepare briefings in Brussels, I say that uh, you contribute to the implementation also of the convention. So there is a basis. Uh, it's very important, I put here this project, DESIRE, because I still don't have the concrete results of LEDRA. Uh, I give this just an example of the projects. It's very important now for your final reporting uh, to show the concrete results. That, as you said, very important, this is not only research, basic research, because as you have seen, we funded a lot of research. Uh, the purpose is to reach solutions. And this can bring the, the project forward and can bring your research ahead of other researchers. So if I receive in the final reporting, a, apart from uh, the standard obligations of reporting that you have, on, you know, based on the administration and based on the administrative instructions and guidelines, it would be good in your a final reporting to have an executive summary inside the report or separate where you have a synthesis of each policy brief <coughs> mentioning concrete results and I would say not only to address the researchers and the research community but also to address the citizens to address the policy makers in a simple language because they don't always understand the how to say the dedicated research language so this really can bring your project 
in front because we have some presentations now in Brussels of success stories. And one thing is from your side, you have to convince member states. So there has been, there, you need some uh, background work to do now. Uh, that it's very important to continue research on the certification and how to continue. And also from our side, we use your final reporting and we take some abstracts from there, we take the concrete results and we present the success stories. So it's very important to say that in this area we had a success story and this comes from Ledra. I give an example. Uh, so here there is a question, where is the certification in Horizon 2020? In fact, there is no specific call called desertification. As you will see, the first call uh, it deals with, uh, it's a, first of all, it's not a research project we are asking for, we are asking for coordination and support actions. And the aim was to, uh, the, the, real, the reason behind was that priorities changed in Horizon 2020, and as I said, uh, we need strong lobbying now. Uh, of the record is, of course, don't take the minutes of what I say. Uh, so, uh, now we proposed a coordination support action and the reason was to see what has been done and what are the needs, how we proceed from now on and build a strategic agenda. So, this coordination support action is going to deal with, uh, with a lot of things. It does not have only coordination, uh, desertification. Desertification is one of the things, but it uh, deals with land management, with soil issues and desertification, which is called land degradation, really. But it, I tell you, we can go in this, uh, in this call, however, it is not a dedicated call on desertification. That's why I will try to propose and of course, based on your support, to propose for the next call, 15, uh, 16, 17, to propose something, de something dedicated on the certification. Um, now, the aim of this call, of the first call, which uh, you know the deadline is 8th of April, uh, the aim is to have interactions between, because it's not a research project, basically this funding, meetings, uh, coordination work, coordination international and international, of European efforts, of uh, what already exists, uh, and to put together groups. And the aim will be to build a strategic research agenda for desertification. This is the aim, not only for desertification, for soil issues, land issues. Now, since it's not dedicated on desertification, you can participate in this, but uh, I will try also to propose something similar for the next course. I would, however, suggest to participate in this call if you have the time and if you have done the necessary background uh, preparation. Uh, the aim, for instance, a result of this would be to have a joint call. After this, after this coordination support action, you, get, uh, you have your strategic agenda, what needs to be done in the certification not only talking about uh, research, but talking about policy. Because as you know, our Director General of Research becomes a policy directorate. So, we are talking also, we have now the science policy interface. Uh, and a result, for instance, of this, um, of this coordinate, coordinated support action would be an element. You know, in that case, uh, there is a lot of work to be done through this coordination support action to bring the member states inside. So it will not be only uh, research institutes, but we need uh, member states inside. And uh, okay, then you will work on another, and from the area, then you can have your research agenda and propose research actions. So the aim of this call is better coordination of fragmented research. So we need to have all the researchers together because also the funding uh, of the ERANET then or of a call of the next uh, research action will be important. So there uh, you have to join forces between your researchers and also have with your stakeholders and users, policy makers. And this is the innovation, if you want. 
um, um, positive aspect and also requirement for this call is that we need to have open exchange of information, of results, and timely. So we will have to keep, uh, there are no any more extensions, as you like, in, uh, in the projects, and no extensions in the new project. We will want to keep uh, the, the duration, the exact duration of the projects in order to be able to advance, because we have every year a call. And uh, the aim of this call is to mobilize the actors, all the relevant actors. Uh, because after this support action, there will be a research initiative. And of course, uh, very important is to improve awareness of desertification. I think that's something that you are doing uh, with your project, and uh, it's very really important to you know to stress out this that there is awareness of desertification and how you do that. That uh, there is uptake of research results. That you involve citizens. In fact, there is a new initiative that we are negotiating now, and maybe we will make it to put it up. It is called, uh, it is a mutual learning actions, where we are going to involve citizens, which means we are going to go in every member state, in the 28 <coughs> member states, we will have one workshop in each member state, and we are going to ask the opinion of the citizens. That's why citizens have to know about the certification. So, you have to think how you produce your policy briefs to be able to address the citizen and not only the researcher, because you need the support of the citizen and they need to know what is the desertification, why the European Commission continues funding desertification. And, uh, okay, I spoke about this already, that, uh, okay, we want to increase the dialogue between relevant uh, actors, between uh, stakeholders, between scientists, and we need to have clustering, clustering of national activities, of ongoing activities, of past activities, of European activities, of certification, and to create synergies. Uh, desertification has a global dimension, it's a global problem, so, uh, the international uh, participation and the national cooperation is, uh, is encouraged, always. And as I said, we need to have improved science <coughs> policy interface, which you are doing in the project and uh, it's good to continue like that. And I'm going to present also, this is the last point of my presentation, um, we are organizing under the Greek Presidency, the auspices of the Greek Presidency, we are organizing this uh, European conference on nature, really it's a nature in cities, so it's uh, working on the cities and you have the urban development, but the peri-urban and the rural, rural urban, where I think the certification also problems come inside. So the certification is relevant in this event, uh, we are using nature based solutions. That's why I said what we can do with desertification using nature-based solutions. This is a question and this is the question to address because you have to join now this initiative which is working with nature. This is the new message of uh, Horizon 2020. There is this new initiative, Renature in Cities, but just listening to Renature in Cities does not mean it's only cities. It is urban, peri-urban, rural, urban, as I said. So, um, I invite you to participate to this conference uh, using the funds, and hope there are funds from uh, remaining from the project, and uh, you really to show that the certification is there. And uh, to mark really the presence of uh, the certification, to participate in the discussions, and to participate and contribute to the recommendations, because the recommendations will be recommendations for the next course. So there to find the connections. And here are some, uh, you know, the sessions. I just put the sessions and then, as I said, this, uh, this issue goes under session two, nature-based solutions, and under session four, the urban laboratory, because this includes the urban, the urban, the urban getting nature-based solution on the ground which is what you are doing and what you are using to mitigate the certification. I will not uh, go on this. Uh, 
And also, I think that green infrastructures is also something relevant, how to proceed in the future and where this item is now. So, I'm trying to connect with this. And uh, this is not. And also, another issue, another issue very important, is uh, where also uh, desertification lies from the socio-economic point of view under the community-based approaches where there is also international cooperation and it's another group but also there uh, you could also submit and, uh, and join uh, this part is also another part that we are funding because this project deals a lot with social, social issues and uh, on not only the physical, uh, the physical aspects but also the social aspects Okay, this is all, as I said, this is the issue community-based approaches, uh, the governance aspects, which is very relevant with, and as you see, point two is the mutual learning action plan. This is uh, the, the action that we want to bring now forward, and where I think in relation to the citizens to have the science, because we're doing science policy interface. Now we want to do science citizen interface, science policy and citizen interface because we need the support of the citizens. So I will not proceed with this. And so what's next? What's next? Uh, things are changing, as I said, in Horizon 2020. Uh, very important keywords, sustainable development, green economy, which is very relevant uh, with you, citizens, sustainable community-based approaches. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. And, uh, explaining to us how the electoral project was already very much in the spirit of the Future Horizon 2020 approach. Um, thank you for reminding us about the importance of formulating the recommendations, not only for scientists, not only looking at the usefulness or otherwise of the methods uh, of the theory implications that our research might produce, but also looking at what it means for policymakers and what it means for practitioners and explaining why that is so important if we want to have a high funding for decertification and land degradation uh, in the future. Um, you asked us to lobby um, to highlight the importance of desertification, and I think that everybody is here converted anyway. Um, but I would also ask you to lobby, and that is um, the approach of the European Commission to not only fund multidisciplinary research, but also fund research that, in addition to being excellent, also must be policy relevant and must be useful to stakeholders. This new approach is not yet understood by the science administrations of the United States, including in this country of Germany. You need to go and lobby the science administrations, the national funding agencies, and explain the value of this approach, because otherwise they're not going to vote our attractive projects out when it comes to the voting amongst the representatives of the member states. So please lobby for us as well as all of us lobby uh, for you and the issue of the Thank you very much, Maria. I, I think that uh, a very important uh, opportunity for you is this event in uh, which, takes uh, which takes place in Brussels on 13 and 14 May. That is really an opportunity you will see uh, the people, the participants who are there, and this is really an opportunity to make to give the publicity to this important issue, this application. Thank you very much. Thank you.